Nearly 390 different board, card, and tabletop games and accessories were released and restocked this month, which can be overwhelming. Which is why we've compiled this list of suggestions from what's available right now, including our top picks, games that caught our attention, and a few wild cards. All this and more is ahead in this month's Board Game Buyer's Guide. Hey there, I'm Chaz Merler with Watch It Played, and let's begin this month's Board Game Buyer's Guide with 10 new releases and restocks that caught my attention and why. It's this episode's Eye Catchers. The first game that captured my curiosity this month is the Adventure Zone Bureau of Balance game based on a podcast and series of graphic novels by the McElroy family. Now, the board game expands on these, allowing players to create their own unique adventures in the Adventure Zone universe. Bureau of Balance is a cooperative storytelling game for two to five players, which uses a dynamically generated dungeon created by combining multiple decks of cards. As challenges are overcome, new ones are revealed as the story unfolds towards the game's overall objective of embarking on an adventure in about an hour that will leave players with a hilarious story to tell. And in the game Living Forest, players... Isn't every forest living? Maybe I... In the game Forest Like Every Other Forest, players are nature spirits working to save the forest and its sacred tree from the flames of Onibi. And they're aided in their mission by various animal guardians who have come together to land a hand... or hoof, I suppose. Each turn, they deliver valuable elements to the players, so combining the available team of animal guardians the best way possible will be crucial to the player's success. Now, the game arrived in European markets several months ago and became available in North American stores around December 10th. So if you'd like to spend some time in the living forest, well, now may be your chance. And now, moving from the forest to the seas, we have Tranquility, a cooperative card game in which players fill the sea with islands represented by numbered island cards in an effort to guide a wayward ship home before any player runs out of cards. The island cards must be placed so that the grid ascends in numerical order from bottom left to top right. The players win if they manage to complete the grid and have placed a start and finish card. However, though, players may not communicate as they do this, instead playing the game in silence. Tranquility, published in 2020, is being updated in its not yet released sequel, Tranquility The Ascent, which follows the same premise, but challenges players this time to climb a mountain as opposed to traverse the sea. And while the original Tranquility recently came back in stock at selected retailers, Tranquility The Ascent is expected to be released this spring. And if peace and tranquility just aren't your thing, well, the next game is right up your alley then, because the next game, Catapult Feud, goes in the complete opposite direction. As its name suggests in Catapult Feud, two players set up 3D plastic castles across the room from each other, and then use little catapults to try and knock down their opponent's castles and troops. Each player's turn is divided into four phases, tactics, aiming, fire, and cleanup, but <laughs> at this game's core, it's really just about lobbing itty-bitty boulders across the dining room table at your opponent's stuff. No, oh, what a time to be alive! Now, Catapult Feud was originally named Catapult Kingdoms during its Kickstarter campaign back in the summer of 2020. And now, much like a propelled plastic projectile, it has landed in the hands of its backers and retailers. Units of this game seem to be selling out pretty fast, though. So if you're unable to find a copy of this game, well... You could always just have your older brother throw shoes at your pillow fort, which which is the version of this game that I grew up playing, so you could do that. And traveling even further away from Tranquility brings us to Paranoia, specifically the Acute Paranoia box set designed to be a slightly streamlined rule set for the RPG Paranoia, one of my all-time favorite role-playing games. A Paranoia takes place in a distant, apolyptic... <laughs> apocalyptic future where mankind's entire view of reality is shaped by misinformation provided to them by a demented centralized artificial intelligence. And if you want to know more about this absurdly unrealistic premise, well, just, just Google it. 
Now, in addition to acute paranoia, yeah, I'm not going to go back and re-record that. In addition to acute paranoia, a slew of other materials for this game were also recently released as well, including the original core set, a Truth or Dare campaign, a compendium of completely safe gear, a player aid of random access memes, and more. Which I am not going to cover. However, there are five more games that caught my eye that I am going to cover. But first, I want to let you know that this episode was made possible in part by the legendary expansion Annihilation from Upper Deck, which introduces Annihilus, Lord of the Negative Zone, a new force so threatening that both friend and foe, hero and villain, must join forces together to deter this dastardly demagogue from dealing destruction across dozens of dimensions. And so, the stage is set for the Fantastic Four to join forces with Doctor Doom, Galactus, and other mainstays of the Marvel Universe. It's time for all forces to unite, side by side, against the incoming menace, because you have big plans this weekend which you'd rather not have ruined by complete galaxy-wide extinction. Annihilation is an expansion for the legendary base game, which is required to play, and is coming soon to local game stores and UpperDeckStore.com. If not already, perhaps check their website to find out for sure. Follow the link in this video's description for more information, such as the information I just mentioned you can find out on their website by following the link in this video's description, because victory will require putting your trust into your former foes. For now. A trio of card games continues this month's list of eye-catchers, starting with Compromat, a one-on-one -on -one challenge in which two players are rival spies competing by using blackjack hands to win missions and collect special abilities. Based on blackjack, going over 21 while attempting a mission will collect that player notoriety tokens. And fame is not something that a spy trying to keep a low profile wants to accumulate. If the game is played over the course of six rounds, unless one spy loses their cover before that happens. Or, for a more traditional trick-taking game with a twist, there's Faux Diamonds, in which players sell their cards, representing types of diamonds, on value tracks that change over the course of the game after each sale. Making the most profitable sales and winning the game will require making some really tough choices along the way. And winning a trick will allow the player to sell their wares for a really high price, but even if they can't, other options are still available to try and squeak out a profit. Even so, it's not quite so simple, because opponents can play faux diamonds at any time, causing the markets to fluctuate unexpectedly, throwing a wrench into one's best laid plans. And you can put those profits to good use by investing in your very own unicorn army in Unstable Unicorns for kids. This adaptation of the 2017 card game Unstable Unicorns is designed to introduce younger players to the magical world of unicorns and strategy games. The original version of the game included 20 different unicorns, each with a special power, which players would gather to build their own unicorn army in order to defend against or decimate the other players. Now, supporting two to six players, ages six and up, this version of the game features brand new characters and adorable artwork. Slightly less adorable, though, are the cryptic creatures of the deep in our next game, plotting to lure mankind to its doom one transcontinental steamship at a time. It's unfathomable. Lurking within the depths of the Atlantic Ocean are a swarm of vicious, unspeakable horrors. The Deep Ones, who have infiltrated the USS Atlantica, taking the forms of human Deep One hybrids, working to sink the ship from within. Each game of Unfathomable has one or more players assuming the role of these hybrids, and how well they can secretly sabotage the efforts of the other players might mean a difference between a successful voyage and a sunken ship. Now, Unfathomable is a game of hidden traitors based on the now out of print Battlestar Galactica game from 2008. So, if you missed out on that game or are looking for another with a similar vibe, then Unfathomable may be worth looking into. And this month's top eye-catcher is one that successfully caught my attention, too, when I discovered that it exists this month. Magnate the First City, in which players are property developers competing to maximize their construction profits before the booming real estate market eventually crashes to the ground, taking everyone's sales potential right along with it. Magnate the First City is a mid-weight strategy game for 1-5 to five players, in which those players pad their property portfolios by purchasing plots of land, constructing buildings on that land, marketing their developments, and then selling them off, hopefully for a nice tidy profit. 
But not all locations are equally appealing to all types of tenants. So strategic planning and tactical construction will be necessary to increase the odds of attracting the most tenants and improve one's return on their investment without benefiting their opponents too much along the way. From my understanding, the designer of this game, James Naylor, worked on it for nearly a decade prior to kickstarting it two years ago. And now that it's available, I can say that all of that work really shows. If you're interested in some housing market hijinks, then Magnate, the first city, is definitely worth looking into. And there we have 10 board game releases and restocks that caught my eye this month. And if they caught yours as well, well, then consider subscribing and enabling notifications so you don't miss out on any future suggestions. In the meantime though, let's continue on to our next segment, What's in Store, where we take a little field trip to a store and check out the games that are actually on store shelves and search for some hidden gems. In this episode, the store that we visit is not a sponsor, but it is Go Calendars and Games, one of those temporary game and toy stores that pop up in the malls around the holidays to, to see what kind of board game selections these holiday opportunity type of stores actually carry. Are they worth checking out? Well, let's find out what's in store. Now, this particular shop had three main game shelves, the first of which was split into trivia and Monopoly games. And I don't I think that I have ever seen so many different versions of Monopoly collected together for sale in one place. It, it was an entire floor to ceiling shelf just of Monopoly. Different versions of Monopoly. Lots and lots. They got a Monopoly on... Oh, brother. But uh, think about it. Uh, Monopoly is synonymous with board games for arguably the majority of people. So it makes sense to combine that familiar title with as many different interests and intellectual properties as possible. It's just a way to get people unfamiliar with the hobby, you know, to buy into it. Uh, that, that said, I did get a chuckle out of seeing Cash Grab Monopoly sitting dead center right there on the shelf. Let's move on though to several of the games that I thought were worth mentioning on the trivia games section of the shelf. Now most of the games in this section were derivatives of the standard sets of cards containing questions and answers covering either general knowledge or a specific category. Other than those, there were not one but two games based on the Golden Girls TV show which ran from 1985 through 1992. In case you're a fan of that type of thing. Thank you. A game called Now, or Kano, which I desperately want to call it, it, was there which uses Google Assistant for context-specific questions. So they have answers that will change depending on where you play the game, making it different every time you play it. Well, as long as you don't play it in the exact, exact same spot. And then there was Snakes, in which a group is given a multiple choice question and only two minutes to work out the correct answer. However, among the group are snakes, players who already know the correct answer and must try to steer their fellow teammates away from that correct answer in order for them to score. Now, this game is from a company named Big Potato Games, and every game by them that I've seen has been consistently interesting. Next was a shelf of party games, which featured not only two different versions of Speak Out, but also its legally distinct clone, the Mouthguard Challenge. Apparently, games based on oratory obstruction must be really hot this holiday season, so there you go. Some of the other games on the shelf that stood out to me were Telestrations, which is always a treat, even if you feel you don't have any artistic talent, which sometimes actually can make the game more fun. Then there was Codename Pictures, which is a great companion to the original... Oh, wait, I got out some games. A great companion to the, the original and the two-player duet version of this excellent clue-giving game. Uh, speaking of clues, both Herd Mentality and Blank Slate were there, which are group-based clue-giving games where players try to guess the answers that the other players will give for certain suggestions and clues. Squad Up, I discovered, is very similar to a fantastic party game called Time's Up, in which players must give clues using a variety of different methods. You gotta say it, say it with fewer words, act it out. Fantastic game and Wits and Wagers, which is, in my opinion, perhaps the best trivia game of all time. Especially this deluxe edition in the yellow box, which is my favorite edition of it, which I have right over there on that shelf, but I forgot to get it off the shelf to show here on the table. So here's a picture of it. And here's a marmoset. 
The third shelf, labeled Strategy Games, included some standards that I'd always recommend, like Catan, King Domino, Ticket to Ride, Pandemic, and even Stratego, but there were also some that I was actually really surprised to see in this store, such as Risk Legacy right here, which morphs and evolves over the course of 15 gameplays and is still, yeah, still my favorite legacy style game to date. Then there's Bosk, a cutthroat game about being the best tree you can be. And then there was The Goonies, Escape with One-Eyed Willie's Rich Stuff from The Op, which is an entry in their Coded Chronicles line, a series of mystery puzzle games, which also includes ones based on The Shining and another featuring Scooby-Doo. And there were also several games that I wasn't already familiar with, including King Me, which puts a few twists on checkers, Banana Bandits, in which players tussle as they climb up a 3D building, and Map Maker, which is a game all about winning an election by gerrymandering the available districts. And this one especially stood out to me because it looked like a really interesting little abstract game that I, that I would like to track down and try myself. There were also some games that if someone found themselves standing in front of this shelf and had no idea what to pick, would be my top recommendations. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Las Vegas Royale is an updated version of one of my all-time favorite games, Las Vegas, in which players roll dice in an effort to win a majority of six different casinos, each worth a different amount of points. Players can strategize how to utilize their die rolls during most of the game, but every round inevitably comes down to a little bit of luck as well. This Royale version includes some additional elements from a previous expansion, and I cannot recommend this game enough. Speaking of games that I absolutely adore, this one right here is the New York version of Santorini, a standalone sequel to the original, which is this guy right here, in which players build taller and taller buildings in an effort to be the first to get one of their workers to the top of one of those buildings. Now, Santorini is a charming game with an outstanding table presence. I mean, seriously, given the chance, try this game. And it was a really pleasant surprise to see Raccoon Tycoon on the shelf. Now this is a great little stock trading set collection game and another one of my all time favorites. In fact, the, the last episode I mentioned Raccoon Tycoon because its follow up game, Lizard Wizard, recently became available in both a standard and premium edition. Some people, including myself, have been confused as to what the differences are between those two versions. So let's take a closer look at these different editions of Lizard Wizard and try to get some control over its various versions in our next segment right after this. And now for a new segment, version control, which is going to dive into the differences between a game's various editions. For example, last episode's list of eyecatchers included the standard version of the newly released light economic set collection game, Lizard Wizard, which was also made available in a limited premium edition. So what's the difference between the two versions and is it worth trying to track down its premium edition? Let's find out with the help of a little version control. Here's a look at what's included in the standard edition. Both versions include all of these components with the following exceptions. The standard edition, sold in the red box, has a cardboard first player marker and its card area and resource markets are both attached as one single layer board. The blue premium edition box is slightly thicker and adds several more components into the mix, such as having a chunky wooden first player marker, player screens, a score pad, eight additional spell cards, and four achievement markers which glow in the dark, because why not? Also, the card area and resource market come as two separate boards, with the resource market being a dual layer board to help keep those pesky little resources in their current place throughout the game. Now, one thing that I was surprised to discover was that the premium edition does not include the upgraded coins and reagent tokens. These were stretch goals that were unlocked during the game's Kickstarter campaign, and at first, I thought that this meant that they were going to be included in the premium edition, but they're not. Actually, the upgraded components are included in a separate premium component pack, which includes gold metal replacements for all the game's money coins and blue metal replacements for all its mana coins, plus painted wooden tokens for all of the reagents and six neoprene player mats. So there you go. There are the differences between the various versions of Lizard Wizard that have been printed. 
And if you, like me, are interested in upgrading the components for this game, then it may actually be the premium component pack product that you might be looking for to upgrade its bits and pieces. I hope that this little guide has been useful and has helped give your game library a little version control. And now, this month's best bets. Retail releases with either a proven track record, rave reviews, or both. If you're looking for a new hobby board game, then in my opinion, any one of the following is worth looking into. And let's start with Oath, Chronicles of Empire and Exile, in which one to six cunning agents guide the course of history in an ancient land. Players may choose to bolster the old order, or instead scheme to bring the entire kingdom to ruin. Either way though, Please bring some lunch back with you. Then the consequences of one game will ripple through those that follow, changing what resources and actions future players may have at their disposal, even altering the game's core victory condition. Oath foregoes what its publisher calls fancy production tricks, app-assisted mechanisms, or production gimmicks, focusing instead on the gameplay and storytelling experience of the game. The game can be reset at any time and doesn't require the same playgroup from one game session to the next because there's no scripted narratives or predetermined plot points. But in the end, the history that's embedded into each copy of Oath will grow and will be as unique as the players who helped build it. And speaking of games designed to weave tales, The Adventures of Robin Hood invites players to take on the role of Robin Hood and his companions with the action taking place in a living game board with no set pads. The board changes over the course of each adventure with various actions and secrets integrated into the game levels which are revealed over the course of the story. The game board remembers what players have already explored and the entire game can be set up and broken down quickly. Additionally, the game tells the story of Robin Hood in a high quality hardcover book, and that story changes depending on the decisions that the players make. Now, let's switch gears to Kabuto Sumo, a dexterity game in which players are highly trained beetles competing for athletic supremacy in the age-old sport of legendary insect wrestling. The gameplay of Kabuto Sumo resembles those coin pusher arcade games in which you strategically drop quarters onto a platform and then anxiously anticipate coins cascading off that platform. This game features a similar experience, requiring players to strategically slide their pieces onto the board while pushing the other players off of it. The result is an interesting combination of dexterity, strategy, and a little bit of luck. A recent restock that was originally available earlier this year and may be worth revisiting is The Initiative, a cooperative game of story, strategy, and code breaking which takes place in 1994 where a group of teenage friends have just discovered a mysterious board game called The Key. Now, the players will help the teens through a pivotal chapter of their lives by following a series of missions linked together by an interactive comic book. The game's campaign is broken into a number of different chapters, each of which builds on the knowledge and story from the previous chapters, weaving a narrative, code-breaking mystery into a unique experience. And this month's bestest bet just may be Roleplayer Adventures from Thunderworks Games, a cooperative storybook board game for one to four players set in the world of another Thunderworks game, Roleplayer. In Roleplayer Adventures, players choose from a variety of characters to play. They face challenges and they make decisions that will change the story as they progress through 11 core adventures and a replayable side quest. Whichever course they choose, players will need to navigate their missions with care. It's up to them to decide who to befriend and who to battle. Will you slay the giant troll or attempt to make peace? Will you do the vampire's bidding or defend the mysterious cultists that he wants to destroy? Will you remain loyal to king and country or side with the enemies of the crown? Whichever choice you make, please bring some lunch back with you. Now, while the focus of the Board Game Buyer's Guide is on games that are available right now, I did also want to make an exception and mention the role player's Nephrasis Judgment expansion because while this expansion has recently shipped to those who backed the Role Player Adventures Kickstarter campaign last year, this little guy right here won't actually arrive in retail locations until its second printing, which is currently scheduled to be completed next fall. The Nephrasis Judgment expansion adds over 40 unique storylines, which are woven throughout the base game's campaign. It also adds new elements related to the backstories and alignment of characters that are imported from Roleplayer, providing every character with a unique origin. So if you're wondering why you can find Roleplayer Adventures, but not its Nephrasis Judgment expansion, well, that's the scoop. 
But, you know, I suspect that the Role Player Adventures base game, which is available now, probably contains enough content to keep its players busy until its expansions reprint next year. And with that, we have this month's Board Game Buyer's Guide. And to find even more of this month's most popular board, card, and tabletop games, continue on to Momenten or any one of the other Watch It Played informative and instructional videos. Until next time, I've been Chaz Merler, and take care.